Roost platform is such a powerful tool because it connects to your disparate systems, pulls in data through APIs, forms, webhooks, and allows you to put it all together in an automated workflow. But you already know that. One of the keys to unlocking your powers of automation is by knowing exactly where to find and test your data inputs. So instead of getting lost in the details of APIs, Jinja, let's take a step back and look at how you can find the data in order to best understand how to make use of it. Let's start with the context. It's the first and most important thing to understand. Any data coming in through a trigger that you set up in your workflow will exist in the context when that workflow is run. As an example, let's take a look at the workflow that you have completed by the end of Roost 106. This workflow is triggered by a form, and this form requires that a user, an action, and groups are selected. And if I come back to the workflow and I click on the results tab for this workflow, I can click into the results and I can see all of my data in the context. Now, a nice little trick here is you can click on the little editor button here next to context, and it's gonna show me all of the data that comes in from running this workflow. Essentially, the context includes all of the data coming in from the form, as well as any variables or data aliases that you have configured in your workflow. And clicking on that editor will give you the opportunity to test some of those Jinja calls to make sure that you're referencing the right information. This allows you to verify for accuracy before you actually take it to a workflow. For example, if I'm looking for the organization ID from my context data, I could simply type ctx dot whatever that variable is and test and make sure that that information is actually there and accurate. So when I type in ctx dot organization dot ID, I can see that I do indeed have my organization ID here. And if you're wondering where the dots come from, those are simply coming from walking down the data tree. So I have my context going into my organization and the organization has several parameters under it and I want to select ID. This process is something we highly recommend that you do to ensure that you're always getting the output that you expect. Next, let's talk about the result variable. And to do this, we're going to go ahead and open up this sub workflow here and take a look at the get group action. Now, this is a Microsoft action. And if we want to reference the results of this particular action, we can use that result variable. And you'll see that here. If I open up on success, we're doing just that with this action. Now, the results of this action are going to be to give us a group object with all of the parameters. And before we actually get into these data aliases, let's look at the results and the specific action to see how the data is structured. So I'm going to click on results and I'm going to click on the get group action here. Now, this is another area where you can see the inputs and the outputs of an action. But here, if I want to look at get group, I can check the results. Now, in this particular action, you'll see that there is result data and value. This gives us all the data from this particular object and we can reference this using the capital result variable. So if I jump back over here to the action, we can take a look at some of these data aliases as examples. If I want to get the result of the entire action for get group, I can create a variable called group and map it here to result result.data.value. Now, why is it result result.data.value? Again, this is just referencing the data tree that we just looked at. The capital result variable is how we get the roost result. And then we can dig into the specific Microsoft action in this case and use result.data.value to get all of the information from the group object. And by creating this as a data alias, we now have in the context a variable called group. So we've completely simplified this process for the rest of this workflow by only needing to reference ctx.group to get all of the group object information. Now, I really want to emphasize that if you're using another integration action, something like Imibot, for example, you're not going to see result result data value. That is simply what we're getting from the Microsoft action. So you should always check the results and check the action to see what that data structure looks like so you can determine how to reference the information or parameters that you need. So if I jump back to the results in context and I run ctx.group, I will see all of the parameters for the group object, otherwise known as result result.data.value. And again, I can continue to go down the tree as well if I want to be more specific. Maybe I want to do ctx.group.displayName. Now I can see the display name for this particular group. So remember, by referencing this data, we can create data aliases. I can even create another data alias specifically for the display name if I wanted to. But what if I want to make a variable in the workflow that contains data from a past action. That's where the tasks variable comes in. Tasks is an action agnostic way to reference data from the workflow. So for example, if for some reason I wanted to take the get group data on another action further down the tree, I could simply write something like tasks.getGroup, which references the action where I want to get the data, dot result, dot result. But Brandon, you handsome automation educator, I hear you say, what's the difference between a data alias and publish result as in an action? Well, well, 
well, my keen-eyed friend. Let's wrap up by talking about the differences between these two. Both of these options can be found in each action. Publish result as can be found in the action itself and data aliases can be created in the transition. By using publish result as, you're essentially mapping a variable to result.result .result for that action, which will give you all of the information in the output. So in many cases, if you don't want to get into the granular detail of the data, you just want the result in general, publish result as will give you exactly what you're looking for. But data aliases, on the other hand, give you the ability to get more specific. Like I said, if you want to use results, you want to use tasks, those types of variables that allow you to go down the data tree, if you will, you can get more granular, more specific, and create variables from specific sets of data within an object, let's say. So with a data alias, you could do result.result, .result, even though that would be the same thing as publish result as, or you can do result result data value organization ID. You can go as far down as you want or be as specific as you need to be. So the difference between the two will be determined by the granularity that you need for setting a variable. So I hope you found this helpful as a quick tour through how data is passed and how you can make and use variables in your workflows. For more information about manipulating data and becoming a Jinja Ninja, don't forget to check out our Roost 100 series, specifically Roost 103, which is our Jinja course, and join us in the Cluck U Discord channel if you have any questions as you're working through your automation building. We'll have some more details in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.